I'm a little bit out of practice. It used to be that I would work on redstone contraptions two or three times a week, but now I have taken some time away. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm looking at some of these redstone builds and I'm thinking to myself, what? What on earth is going on here? Seriously, what is going on down here? I know what's going on here and I don't like it one bit. I decided I really wanted to fix this situation, so to get myself back into the groove, I've made my first redstone related purchase. It is this rather lovely little book, Minecraft Redstone for Dummies. Uh, it was published in 2015, but you know, I don't think that's going to be a problem, and hopefully I should be able to get some valuable information from this thing. Now, one quick thing that I want to remind you of, I paid actual money for this book. It was £10, which is like $15. So just, just keep that in mind. I've made a few little bookmarks and things, so I, I've got a few little pages that I want to go to and, and reference. All right, do a redstone, do a redstone. Well, actually at the minute I'm just placing wool, but I guess that's like half of a redstone person's job. So I've recreated this structure block for block from the book, and yeah, it's teaching us how to actually power things in Minecraft using redstone. And for the most part, this is valuable information. I guess if I were to nitpick just a tiny, tiny bit, it's, it's this redstone line that runs into this block here, doing nothing. Uh, if I was just starting out with redstone, my little two brain cells would be wondering what on earth this is all about. Is this somehow powering this lamp as well? But it is worth remembering I am Sergeant Smooth Brain, so I, I could just be me. Let's move on. To the redstone comparator, which is always quite difficult to explain, so let's see how this book does. Uh, the redstone comparator has one property that functions regardless of the comparator settings. It doesn't provide an output if the charge going into the side is stronger than the charge going into the back. For example, if redstone dust reaches both the side and back of a comparator but the path to the side is shorter, the comparator's output always has a charge of zero. Right. I mean, I already understand how comparators work, and that's left me a little bit baffled as to how comparators work. I mean, yeah, I guess... I mean, it is true. You know, if you run a redstone line into the side of a comparator and then run it into the back of the comparator, the output will always be zero. It does then go on to explain subtract mode, which it does a much better job at. You can use them to create specific levels of charge and then manipulate and combine them to produce the results you want. And then it shows this diagram here. This diagram here. Apparently this is me manipulating and combining them to get the results that I want. I'm starting to see two little problems with this book. First one is that the person writing it is obviously very, very smart. You know, they they clearly have more brain cells than me. Probably a mathematician or a programmer used to explaining complicated concepts using complicated language, not having to do it for morons. I just remember this book's called Minecraft Redstone for Dummies. Dummies! So it's meant to be for morons. Secondly, and I don't want to insult the entire book industry here, but books just aren't really that good at explaining things that happen in interactive, moving visual spaces. Okay, so we're not off to the best of starts, but you know, maybe things can get better. Uh, there's some advice here, which is build a blown up prototype of your machine if possible. I mean, that's slightly peculiar advice, but who am I to argue with a book? I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh... I haven't learnt much there. That was a stupid joke and I'm embarrassed I told it. It's essentially saying that you should build a large version of your redstone contraption and work out all of the different circuits and things before trying to compact it. Genuinely, very good advice. But I'm going to follow that with the caveat that it is advice that I personally have never followed, even when I was first starting out in redstone. But I thought it was worth giving it a go because, you know, it's been a while. So I'm building up a blown up version of this small hidden staircase. And I gotta be honest, it's, oh, uh, it doesn't work. I've built it completely wrong. That's embarrassing. You didn't see anything? I can absolutely see how someone who is just starting out in redstone would massively benefit from this technique. It lays it out really simply. It allows you to have an intimate understanding of what each part of the circuit is actually doing to the things that you're trying to interact with. And I'm gonna be honest, it also looks quite satisfying as well. This is a very good tip, followed later in the book by a very bad tip. I, I hear this written about a lot and I don't understand. I've never heard of anyone actually doing it. The recommendation to sketch out components, inputs, and outputs on paper or in a drawing program and connect them with lines or arrows to indicate how your machine should function. This is... Uh, that's so difficult! How is that in any way easier than just placing the redstone and like actually trying it? It's then interactive. You then don't have to follow a, a sheet of paper that you've got on your desk. I've always found the best way to test the flow of inputs and outputs is just to do them Using levers, do a dry run making use of levers, then you work out what the input and output order has to be for your redstone circuit. Way better than going out and grabbing your etch sketch So from there we move on into all of the redstone components and things, which of course 
You know, there's not many of them because this book was published in 2015, so most of them are in fact missing, which seems like an easy thing to pick on. But remember, I paid £10, $15 for this book in 2022. They're still selling it. Now, luckily for the creators of the book, there aren't actually that many complete redstone contraptions in it. This is about the biggest circuit that's featured. So that means they don't really run into many issues with things not working anymore due to changes to the way Minecraft redstone works. This is the only one that I can think of that probably won't work. What's meant to happen is all of the redstone lamps are meant to turn on as the item falls through the hoppers, but that doesn't happen. But it's probably now a good time to mention that over half of this book is dedicated to command block stuff. Now this is this is all command blocks, just all various different commands and things that commands do, and it goes into extreme detail. They build like giant mini games and everything like that. It's like, look how much better this is. Analog Redstone gets this hopper chain that doesn't work anymore and a bud switch. The command blocks get entire custom worlds. That will no longer work because all of the command block information is completely outdated as obviously they've updated command blocks since then. And that breaks pretty much everything in there, which is probably my biggest issue with selling books about games that are constantly updating and having game changing updates. I mean, look, it seems like an easy target, but I, I paid for this. I want to explode something. Thankfully, there's a little section in the book about TNT cannons. And when I say little section, I mean very, very little. But, you know, this is... It's a very basic design, of course it still works. And TNT cannons are never not satisfying. However, I was just flicking through the book and I discovered this little machine here that looks like a TNT cannon that kind of fires TNT about 10 blocks. This is worth trying building this. Yeah, upon closer inspection, this is a very curious little design. Yeah, well that's already an issue. This, this redstone is powering this dispenser here. What a masterpiece. Now I have no doubt this is going to work well. It's just, I, I have some questions on some of the design choices. Oh, that is satisfying. Yeah, there's no doubt that's satisfying. But like, why am I having to control the timings manually, but then also there's an eight tick delay? Like, that, that makes things difficult for my little brain. Because I'm having to time things manually, which is fine. It means I can choose where I want my TNT to explode, but then I'm having to factor in this extra delay here. So I need to flick off the lever like a little while before I actually want the TNT to drop down. I'm nitpicking, I know, but I paid for this. The explanation of all of the different logic gates and the ways that they work is very good and clear in this book, so I've got to give it credit there. Using their diagrams, I was able to create a not gate, I was able to create an or gate, I was able to create a NAND gate and an AND gate, which is absolutely fantastic, but I can imagine a beginner at Redstone then wondering, what on earth do I actually use these things for? You see, that's one thing that the official Minecraft Redstone handbook does very well at. It kind of puts, it puts things into perspective. You know, you have, you have redstone contraptions that you can build. You can at least kind of understand how you would use them in a redstone contraption. This is just always giving you the theory. For example, there's a decent amount of time spent explaining one X or gate, which is an exclusive or gate. So it has to be one or the other, but not both or neither for us to get an output. It's a very niche redstone circuit. It's a redstone logic gate that to be honest, I use very infrequently. So I was curious to know how they suggested I use it in my redstone circuits, because maybe I would learn something. But all I found is the XOR gate is complicated, but it's also quite useful. That's, that's, it stops there. And then on this page, uh, it is useful in devices that involve comparisons, which frankly, I don't know what that means. And I don't think any so-called dummies would know what it means either. Okay, this is, this is just funny because this, this structure here just falls into the uncanny valley of builds. <laughs> so we've all done large scale chest storage systems, right? You kind of stack up the chests like this and then you connect them up with hoppers like this. So it creates a snake for the items to go down through. If you were to put items into the top, it would gradually fill up this chest and this chest and this chest and this chest and so on. But the book features a design where the hoppers go straight down. So you have to have this little strange thing up at the top and then and then the items flow through in a really weird order, which actually makes a little bit of sense if you have a double chest up at the top. But then when do you ever just put items directly into the top of a bulk storage system? Normally they'd be flowing in and then that just wouldn't work. You'd get the left side filling up right the way to the top, and then this would eventually start filling up, and then it would start filling up the right-hand side. That's bizarre. This book is filled with oddities like this, and outdated information mixed in with occasional nuggets of genuinely good advice when it comes to building redstone contraptions. So have I relearned redstone from reading it? No, uh, no, but it has got me placing redstone for the first time in a few months, so I guess that's a massive positive. And I can say I've read a book this year, which makes me seem smart. So all in all, I'd consider this an absolutely enormous win.